scripture reading this morning, I ask that you would turn in your Bibles to the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, and from the 24th unto the 28th verse. I say again, John 20, verses 24 through 28. Listen now unto the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered, and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Praise be unto the Lord our God for these words. Amen. If you would, please bow your heads in prayer. Great Master, and Holy Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the ability to gather here in your name. And we ask of you, O Lord, that you would forgive us for our doubts. Forgive us of the times that we have refused to believe in you. For the doubts that were within our hearts. And we thank you, O Lord, that even in the midst of our doubting, even in the very midst of our unbelief, you have still come unto us and shown us by your glorious presence the truth behind your words, the truth of your existence and your rising again. I say and ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, 
And in this alone there is no sin. But this world of sin and depravity, this realm where the enemy of faith seems to reign supreme, this world, it preys upon our doubts, doing whatever it can to aggravate them, and in so doing to destroy the faith that we have so carefully built up over the course of our lives. This world around us seeks to destroy our faith, producing plethoras of evidence and plethoras of ideas that they claim upend the entire paradigm upon which our faith is founded, that they claim negates the existence of divinity. And for many of us, these evidences, these, these questions, and these feelings of inadequacy, these doubts do destabilize and upend our faith. For some of us, these questions, these newfound bits of information do upend and make us question and doubt the one who is above all and doubt the certainty of our faith. So I say and ask of you this day, what then should our answer be? How then are we to match and the endless stream of, it, of evidence and of evidences, I should say, and doubts raised by those around us? How should we soothe and calm the frantic, questioning hearts that have <clears throat> that are created each and every moment? How should we strengthen the bruised reeds of our faith and reignite the smoldering wicks of those around us. There are those of us who would try to match evidence for evidence, to for the seeming claims of the, of the unbeliever, to, to produce and deduce new and, and incredible facts about the world about our society, about our own minds that answer and put aside the doubts raised by the evidence of the unbelievers. And for some, this indeed works. But I say unto you this day that for all the doubts of this world, for soothing the questions and the fears that come upon each and every one of us. There is nothing in all this world that can doubt the pure and honest experience of Christ. There is nothing for soothing doubts and answering doubts like the true and earnest relationship with Jesus Christ. For Christ himself did not come to Thomas speaking of scientific theories and metaphysical ideologies, but instead Jesus came unto Thomas and showed him himself. Jesus came unto Thomas and showed for his doubts, showed him Christ, showed him the true and honest love of Christ. And in that experience, in that true and earnest relationship, Thomas found 
the answer to all of his doubts and all of his fears. And indeed, as another example of this, as another example of how the the true experience of Christ, that true knowing Him and relationship with Him can answer and soothe the doubts that arise within our hearts. I offer my own experience. When I was younger, I was a child, cold and aloof. One not given to great feelings of emotion. But as I matured and as I grew older, the Lord came unto me in a way I still to this day cannot fully comprehend and changed me and made me bit by bit into the man I am today. And though there is no one singular point I can look at and say that is the moment when Christ changed my life, I can say unto you this, that there is one experience I had that sticks with me even today. When I was 13 or 14, I was within this church in the dark of night, kneeling before the cross that is behind me even now, praying and hoping to catch even a glimpse, a feeling of what I had felt in the joys of worship. And as I was there, as I was there before the cross, something came upon me, an otherness, a presence that I cannot fully explain even to this day, but it brought with it a certainty, a truth, a love and an understanding and an acceptance that put no doubt in my mind that I had experienced the true presence of God. And in that experience and in the experiences that came after, I find and have found the answers to the doubts that have come upon me. For the experience itself was the answer, the knowledge that no matter what else I may have learned or what else I may have thought or believed, that moment, that experience, that knowledge of the very presence of God was real. And in that realness was the answer to all of my doubts. That is not to say that I was without doubt from that moment onward. The doubts and the questionings still came. Questions about the nature of my faith, about the validity of my own experience. But no matter what, that experience, that truth that I had seen and felt within my heart, it allowed for the answers to come in. And that experience, that experience of Christ was the answers that I had been searching for. That experience was the truth, the way, and above all, the proof that was needed to answer the doubts that came up each and every day of my life. But I, so then, if the answer 
to those doubts that plague us in our daily lives, the answer to the questions and the fears that come upon us is the true and unadulterated, the true and honest presence and relationship with Christ. So then, the answers to the, wor to the world's questions, the answers to the doubts and the evidences that the world raises against us is not simply to match them in seeming intellectual combat, but instead and more fully to bring them unto that experience of God the Father, to bring them unto that true and earnest relationship with Christ, to bring them unto that true and honest indwelling of the Holy Spirit, so that they may see the truth, and the truth shall set them free. So I say unto you once again, let them see and feel Him in you. Let us live our lives according to the commandments of Christ, walking daily in His presence, so that through us others might see Him and Him alone, to let them come unto the altar, come unto Christ, so that they may ask of their doubts of Him, even as Thomas asked his own doubts of the Lord, and he was answered by the presence of Christ, to let them come unto Him, and let Him enter unto them, to let Him and His true and glorious presence come in to each and every one of them, revealing the truth of God's reality, the truth behind the very fabric of existence, and let them see the love of God. Let them see the answer for all the doubts that have been upon them. For as it is written in Revelations 3, 20 through 22, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Amen. So then, let us guide each other and guide those around us, and guide ourselves unto the full and true experience of God, and accept the knock that comes upon each and every one of our souls, to open the door and allow Christ in, so that He may soothe our hearts and calm our racing minds, and give unto us the answers that we have been searching for. I say unto you, accept that experience of God. Accept the relationship that he has offered unto you. And I say unto you, accept him and his presence, and you shall find the answers to all of your doubts. I say all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amazing grace How sweet the sound 
sound that saved a wretch like me. Who's blind, but now I see And was grace that taught my heart to feel And grace my feet When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've known the days to sing God's praise. And when we first become amazing friends, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And I say unto you this day, let us go forth basking in the true presence of Christ, knowing that in him we shall find the answers that we seek. In his name, go forth. Amen.